All right. Hey guys, thanks for being here and welcome to Team Forever Strong's weekly team call. Today is April 6th and we have a guest speaker tonight, which I am really excited about guys. Um, so a couple announcements here before I introduce you to her, which I'm sure most of you know who she is anyways, because she's amazing. But we first of all have um, our clean eating group guys is going to be starting on the 17th here. So you're gonna to wanna to start posting and sharing that right now on your walls because starting Monday, it's going to be our prep week. So I'm gonna be putting up, you know, the recipes are gonna be going in there, um, the grocery list, all that stuff that everybody needs is gonna be going up on Monday. So this is a great time now, guys, to make a post on your wall, try to get some people in there, for those of you who are newer coaches, running these free groups is really key because this is your chance to be able to build new relationships with people and to be able to add value and help people out and who the heck doesn't like things for free, right? So this gives people a chance to go in there, get some free clean eating recipes for themselves, and then um, you know they can really see how we run our challenge groups. And a lot of times these people go on, guys, to become challengers for our 21 Day Fix groups or any other kind of support and accountability group that you guys have going on. So we have that starting on the 17th. We also have Super Saturday this weekend. Raise your hand if you are going to one in the area. <laughs> All right, awesome guys. It's gonna be so much fun. Make sure that you get yourself to one of these. This is really important. This is all a piece of the puzzle that you need to have in order to have success as a coach. So I always talk about how there's all these different pieces of the puzzle that you need in order to build a successful business. And one of those things is being at the events. So Super Saturdays are held quarterly. You can always check the Coach Online office and find one that is going on in your area and then just get there. Okay. We also have our Diamond Retreat coming up that is on i'm trying to find the exact date here <clears throat> that is on june 3rd so if you guys want to receive an invitation to be a part of that with us one of the requirements is that you help three people this month so that you hit success club so you're going to want to focus on that let that be your goal for this month and also again you'll want to hit it again next month and then obviously you need to be a paid diamond coach so you need to wake up on the morning of <clears throat> may 25th as a diamond coach in order to receive an invitation to be there so we have someone coming from corporate we're going to be having some other top leaders there lots of great things guys if you were there with us last year you know how amazing it was and how it changed your business so make sure that this is something that you put on your goal board and that you're fighting tooth and nail for it because i know i sound like a broken record guys but becoming a diamond coach is literally just the beginning for this business when it can start to become serious for you. So if you have any kind of goals whatsoever with this business and you want to start to earn some, you know, income and you want to start to build a team and, you know, be able to cut back on your full-time job, whatever it is, getting to a diamond coach level is your launching pad for that success. That's where it just begins. All right. Okay. I would like to take a minute to welcome any new coaches onto the team. I know we have a lot of new coaches that are, have been coming on and being introduced, so welcome to our team. And if anybody has anybody on their team that they'd like to congratulate for rank advancements, go ahead and unmute yourself and we can congratulate them. So any Emerald coaches, any new Emeralds this week? <clears throat> I know I saw some on the team page. <clears throat> Emerald coaches. <laughs> All right. Anybody else? All right. Well, I can't remember the exact person who became an Emerald coach today, but maybe their coach isn't on the call right now. All right, guys. I don't want to take up any more time because tonight we have a guest speaker, and you guys probably know her as Colleen Eddy, right? Um, she is married now and her last name now is, is Curtis. Is that right, Colleen? Is that how I say it? Okay. Colleen Curtis. And she is amazing, guys. She's one of my good friends in the business. She is extremely motivational. Like she does amazing talks and spe um, speeches on mindset 
And she is just so spot on with that. And she's really successful in this business. Um, so I wanted to just introduce you to her, but her team is a seven star diamond team. They're a two time elite team. And last year they were ranked number 135 in the company out of almost 500,000 teams, which is absolutely phenomenal. And tonight she is going to be taking the time to talk to you guys about really going from you know, being just a coach into the CEO mindset of this business, because it is that shift in your mind that you need to make to really go all the way with this thing. Once you start really treating this like a business and you start thinking like an entrepreneur, that is when you will start to see the success and start to see the results that you are hoping to see. So anyways, Colleen, I will let you take it over. Thank you so much for being here. We are super pumped to have you. Hey everyone. Um, so before I forget, I wanted to always say at the beginning that if you guys have questions, I love questions at the end. Otherwise, I just feel like a really energetic freak show and everyone's staring at me at the end. So please, if you have questions, um, I'll let you know when I'm kind of wrapping things up and it can be about anything. So I just wanted to say that first. I need at least one good question before we like sign off tonight. So um, thanks for coming tonight and is that, is that your dad, Kathy, on there? I see dad. Someone's dad. I just have to say, like, dad. <laughs> yes, that's my dad and my mom. <laughs> <Hey>! <laughs> you guys have met Colleen before, a long time ago, yeah. one, of the, uh, one of the trips. <laughs> oh, man. I get to teach dad to be a CEO tonight. This is awesome. <laughs> All right, <laughs> So I like to share a super, like, quick two and a half minute little synopsis of where I came from. Um, my story is crazy, but I just like to kind of share the bare bones because a lot of people sometimes think that, you know, becoming a CEO or becoming successful or mastering your mindset is a special gift that only certain people get to get. And that's not the case. So I'm not the rainbow unicorn butterfly glitter girl who's always been running around my whole life being happy. It has been when I say some of the hardest work I've ever done, I truly mean it. And if you guys are wondering why there's not 5 million beach body coaches, because this was the coolest job ever, right? It's because we do the hardest work. We are uprooting our beliefs. We are changing our physical body. We are morphing the way we think. It's, it's the hardest work ever. So kudos to you guys for showing up and being a part of this mission. But um, before I started this journey, I wasn't that person who even understood personal growth. I was so grossed out by that. I've never believed in anything spiritual, religious, or higher powers. I was so anti-everything. So I know you're going to hear me like stand on a soapbox tonight and get excited because I love this topic, but I want you to kind of see you and me and Kathy and Liz and all the people you look up to as equal. You're breathing, you're human, you have a brain, you're here, right? I want you to believe that signing up to be a beach body coach and converting over to becoming a CEO is possible. So we got that out of the way. Um, for me, when I used to work in my corporate career, I lived in this box every single day, this little tiny box. And it was like, you show up at 9am and you're not supposed to do anything outside the box. And if you do you get in trouble and I, I do not like to be shoved in boxes. So my whole life, I've always felt like, you know, this wild child, but I was raised in the Boston Mass area by two amazing parents, and but they just kind of did everything by the book, which is not a bad thing, but I dream so big that when I got shoved in the little box by my parents, I just didn't fit. So I think coming into this journey from my corporate career, my traditional upbringing, um, I had two different sides. I had the, okay, I'm gonna be an entrepreneur now, so I have to live outside that box. As an entrepreneur, you're not in a box. You know, you drink Shakeology, I drink Shakeology, you do challenge groups, I do challenge groups. That's the box, that's the foundation. But the way that you succeed in this business, and I learned coming from the corporate world and then now working this, is that you have to survive outside the box. So when I had the corporate job and I showed up every day and I was, you know, building my resume and my career, making a whole $56,000 a year. And I thought I was like, I made it. <laughs> and you know, i sometimes I would make commissions. I worked at Verizon wireless. That was my corporate job. You know, I just like, I thought that's what I was supposed to do because that's what mom and dad told me to do. 
but it's 2017 and the world is changing fast. Like even, you know, my mom and dad, their life, their job, my sister's job, she's getting her doctorate, like everything's changing fast. So in this day and age, um, I'm kind of merging my story with my intro, but I get excited. Um, in this day and age, you really have to be able to adapt to, you, there's the foundation of you work hard, you respect people, you show up and you have your discipline, things like that. But today, I wanna challenge you to not just be a beach body coach who signed up because you're supposed to and you wanna make money and just because. I wanna challenge you to become the CEO, master all areas of your life, think abundantly, go for all your dreams and stop shoving yourself in this little box. So let me go back to my story real quick. But when I lost my corporate job, that was when my box crumbled because that was the, like the comfy zone. And that was a blessing in disguise for me when I ended up working for that terrible boss who found a way to get rid of me. I'm part of that statistic where I lost my corporate job. Um, that was a blessing in disguise, but in the moment I didn't realize that because I didn't focus on personal growth back, in, back then. I didn't do any of that. But that's, people always ask me, what was the defining moment for you? And that moment where my job was literally ripped out from underneath me, I said, never again will I give someone the ability to do that to me. So that was the day that I made the decision that I was going to have to figure it out some other way. That's pretty much what this business is, is you get to a point where you know that you can do more. You know that your self-doubt is the only thing holding you back. You know that you've got to make some sacrifices and do the things outside your comfort zone. So when and how do we make that transition? So the reason I love mindset in this topic is because you all have the same trainings that I have. We all have the same trainings, pretty much, right? Like give or take a few like little tips or tricks maybe. It's all the foundational basics. And that's why we stopped making trainings at one point. It's because people get stuck in learning land. Rather than taking the foundational training and learning and failing with it, making mistakes, people get stuck. I, I knew that in the beginning. I had my foundational trainings and I was hitting success club. I was earning money. I was getting physical results. And then I was like, hey, where's everyone else? Like, why aren't they doing that? I didn't have a team for the first 18 months. So my, like, I just became obsessed with how can I help more people see success with this? And I just like ripped through personal development, went to seminars. Back in 2015, I spent 40% of my income on personal development, which is probably way more than I ever needed to when I did the math for my taxes. But hey, that's what I did. Um, so this is my passion of helping people see that. So when I sat down, and if you guys like could ever see my desk, it's a hot mess. I wrote down literally everything that I think you need to do to make that trans transition from coach to CEO. But I want you to understand that I think some people miss what the CEO in Team Beachbody is. So we wear two different hats. Like I said, you drink the shake, I drink the shake. We all wear the Beachbody hat. But what makes people stand out and lead? Here it is. Here's the second hat that you need to put on to become the CEO. It's how you serve others. So it's not the me song anymore. It's the we song. So if you wake up every day and you're saying, oh, I'm too scared to make that post. Oh, I don't have time because my kids or this and that. And you're playing the me song. You just have to work really hard on your personal growth journey. You're not quite ready to wear that CEO hat where the CEO hat guys, you wake up dedicated to serve no matter what every single day. And I learned this, this experience and this life lesson through, you know, Sean's chemo and all of that craziness. And we all have our own crazy. Like anytime I talk to Kathy, she's like, oh my God, today's a shit show. Like I swear, like, we both have like these crazy lives, right? But I guarantee your day was kind of a little bit of a shit show, right? So we're all equal. We all have a shit show of a life here and there. Hopefully there's no kids and I know I'm saying that's word, but um, when you become the CEO, it's the fifth level of leadership where you are dedicated to serving no matter what. There's no reason why you can't. There's no reason why you won't. So if you aren't at the point where you're waking up feeling so unstoppable that all you care about is who can I serve and help today? Maybe it's a challenger. Maybe it's my team. Maybe it's one of my new coaches. Maybe it's just someone random on social media. 
we just have to work more on your personal growth journey. So if you're like, all right, Kathy, I'm all in. I want to be a 10 star or whatever your goals may be. Okay. I'll just use the example 10 star. I want to earn six figures. I want to retire my husband. I want to pay off my house. Um, whatever. Okay. You have to be become a business owner as a CEO. You have to have that mentality of more. Like I always want more abundance. Um, and the reason why you need to think abundantly is so that you can give more. It's not so that you're swimming in a pile of cash and being like, oh, I love network marketing. That's disgusting. That's not what we do. We are here so that we can give back to our families, our children, put their college funds away and do things like that. But you have to think outside the little box of the Beachbody coach. If you're not 100% sure of what your coach mission is, and by that, when I ask you, hey, you do like this Beachbody fitness thing, what is it that you do? If you don't have a 10 second elevator speech of how you want to serve people and help them, and it doesn't just roll off your tongue, we're still working on the Beachbody coach journey. It's all good, it's okay, but don't expect the CEO results until you have done the grueling hard work on yourself first. And so I deem myself the universe's guinea pig. <laughs> Kathy can probably relate because she always says her day's a shit show. So when Sean got a second diagnosis and we're going through chemo, I have to move. It's holidays. Like, I'm literally like, what the F universe? Like, why are you doing this to me? Right? We play that victim role of like, why is this happening? I had to ask myself as the CEO of my business, why is this happening? And because I serve others, I said, ooh, I know why this is happening. It's so that I can show my team we can do hard things. So that my team doesn't see me taking a break from Beachbody because cancer happened or life happened. I dove into my challenge groups. I dove into my trainings. I literally physically and mentally and emotionally leaned into that struggle to serve others. And that's what CEOs do. So if you're wondering like, okay, you told me that here's the Beachbody coach, the foundation stuff. Here's the CEO. What's the difference? It's that CEOs handle everything different. Your fears, they're, they're still there, but you face them. And your response time facing those fears isn't like a month. Isn't like, okay, May 1st, I'm gonna do it. It's today, it's now. You think about it for 20 minutes and then you do it. So you handle your fears different, you handle your struggles different, you handle life different. So when people don't really take the mastering your mindset stuff serious, it's kind of like saying I don't care about my business. You will never have a, a crowd of people behind you changing lives and have this successful team until you feel so unstoppable because there's many days where you're not really carrying your team, but you're leading from the front and you are rallying the troops. I'm sure you guys have had those feelings where everyone's having a hard month and we all just kind of like wait for someone else to fix the hard month. As a leader, as a CEO, you have to fix those problems. So if you have your personal BS going on and you're not unstoppable, oh man, that CEO hat's gonna be tough to wear. So here's the cool thing, is we can now identify, if you don't know what your mission statement is of, I wanna help people live an abundant, vibrant life where they have the freedom to travel and explore the world. That's mine, okay? If you don't have yours rolling off your tongue yet, I would just want you to go, to go real hard on your personal growth journey. I'm gonna talk about the different types of PD towards the end, but the first how, so you know, I, I do a lot of cheerleader talk to you guys, but the first how of how to become the CEO is figuring out how can I and will I serve every single day? And so it's always about your, your cup has to be filled first, right? So once you get your journey down and your routine down, and um, Micah Folsom taught us this at this event recently. Uh, I wasn't there, but I saw the video. It's not about finding balance. So all you moms, cut the balance talk. It's harmony. Like Kathy's shit show life, she probably finds a lot of harmony and she still makes it happen. Like Kathy and I talk all the time. Like her life is crazy, my life is crazy, and totally different crazies. And we were trying to hit elite last year and we're rooting each other on. And all you can do is be a savage when we're going for big goals like that. There is no time to worry and fear and woe is me. Like the faster, when you fall down, the faster that you get up, the faster you'll get to success. 
People always ask me how Bonnie got to success so fast. They think I like know her secret because she's one of my best friends. And I'm like, want to know what she did? She did everything 12 to 20 times faster than you and me. And when something didn't work, she didn't sit there and analyze it. She just tried 25 more things before you even thought about standing back up. That's what, like, that's the ultimate CEO hustle, grind, change lives mindset. So um, I want to talk a little bit about going from being an employee to an entrepreneur. So everyone here is or was an employee at some point in their life, right? So as an employee, you're told when to show up, you're told what to do, and you're shoved in this little box and you're trading time for money. You have to leave that mindset at your job. And if you're, you know, just beach body now, you've got to leave that old type of employee mindset where it belongs. You are now an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur doesn't worry about the hours spent. They focus on the results that they're getting. So I hate when coaches are like, but I'm doing my power hour, but I'm showing up on social media. And I'm like, so is every other beach body coach. Are you being the CEO and are you doing it in a really big way? If I go to your social media, do I know that you worked out, drank your shake and did PD today? Cool, because every other beach body coach posted about that today. Do I know in the CEO side of it, do I know your daily breakthrough? Do I know how you are going to change my life? If I message you right now, like, is there something that's going to compel me to fill out your little form to do your challenge group? Because there's all the other beach body coaches doing the same thing. You've got to find your groove of unstoppable as an entrepreneur. So when you sign up, it's kind of like Kathy signed you up and she locked you in a dark room. And you're like, what the F? Like, I don't know what I'm doing. And the lights are off and it's really scary, right? Being an entrepreneur, a successful one, is about flailing around in this dark room. So you're going to like be looking for the light switch. You don't know what's going on, right? Kathy's life shit show. I'm just going to keep picking on her because I love her so much. And it's just this flail and it's just like, what's going on? I don't know. And I'm, you're going to eventually find the light switch and the lights come on. And you're like, I get it. But until you are willing to stand up in the dark, flail around by yourself, and look for that light switch, and it could take you two years. Can you guys hold on one second? Something's going on with my dog. Hey, Jen. <laughs> it's like having kids. They've been sick forever. I'm like hand feeding my dog's people food right now, so. Um, okay. I don't remember what I was saying. Oh, the, the dark room. So as an entrepreneur, when you guys are having those moments where you're sitting in your office by yourself, because this is a very lonely journey sometimes, right? We have team calls, we have success partners, but really it's just you every day in your brain <laughs> and that's it. So if you don't become your biggest cheerleader and I don't know what my dog's doing right now, but if you don't, if you're not willing to stand up in the dark and fight for it every single day, it's going to feel impossible. And I want you to remember my really annoying voice right now, the next time that you feel like you're failing, and I'm telling you that it's normal. There have been moments where I'm like, Kathy, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. My team is not moving forward. Like I'm giving my all. I'm serving. I'm leading. Sometimes there's no answers in this business. At my other job, like if a cell phone didn't work or a bill was wrong, there was a solution. In this business, it's a personal development, mental, emotional journey. There's not always a, a textbook answer for why something isn't working for you. You just have to be willing to grow in a really, really big way so that you feel strong enough. So I always ask my coaches, what's your definition of confidence? And typically they'll be like, oh, like you just feel like you can do anything. And the definition of confidence is really that you'll figure it out. People ask me, oh, did you have belief since day one that you could do this? And I said, absolutely. And they're like, so how? Like, how did you know you were going to be successful? And I said, because I know I'd eventually figure it out. So that's the mindset that you need to have. So the whole never give up thing, that whole theme we had, that's a real thing, guys. Don't give yourself an expiration date. If you miss a goal, it's not a failure. It's a delay. I missed a huge bonus this past quarter. Like it makes me want to throw up thinking about it. So does that make me a failure? Hell no. I'm going to wake up where it was um, is it today, quarter one, day one. I think today is actually the beginning of the quarter. Um, maybe it was last week. I can't remember. But 
I can start over this quarter and get it this quarter. So stop letting the hard get you down. I want you guys to own it. So what's funny is when I went to Brendan Burchard um, a few weeks ago, and if you've never been to his events, I highly suggest it. He talks about, you know, like people will stand up on stage and they'll tell their story of why they're, why they're not being successful. And when they tell me, like Brendan Burchard, their struggle, when they say it out loud, it sounds ridiculous. When all it is, is they needed more discipline, more sacrifice, and they had to keep going. That's your only option as an entrepreneur. So if that doesn't kind of tickle your fancy, this is going to be really hard for you. Um, and I know I'm like a tough love direct kind of coach. I know that Kathy's kind of like that too. But I'm just being honest with you guys that as an entrepreneur, there will be those moments of feeling the failure, but you are the one that chooses to confidently keep going or to deem yourself a failure. Like Kathy doesn't call you up and be like, dude, you missed your quarter, your bonus last quarter, you suck, Colleen. She's like, get back up, you're gonna get it this month. Like that's what we do, okay? So let's talk a little bit about, um, you guys might have heard this from Patrick Rylman before, but I recently added this to my presentation because, you know, as leaders, whenever we do one-on-ones, it's kind of like we're detectives to try to figure out where people are missing. And I basically am going straight to these skills not wasting time, like helping people figure out their personal development anymore. Like I want people to own that. that that's on them. But the business side, oh girl, I can help you do that. So the first one, if you guys don't know these five skills, I'll run through them real quick. So the next time you work with your mentor, um, you need to be checking these things with them. Or if, if you guys have a team, check in on these. The first thing is social media. I'll come back to that in a second, but I just want to give you guys the five skills. The second is finding people and forming them, so connecting with people. These are skills that you need to be successful in this business. The third is inviting and follow-up. The fourth is giving an amazing experience to people. And the fifth is introducing the coaching opportunity. So let's go back to the first one, social media. <laughs> This could be, I could talk on social media for like 25 hours. If I go to your page right now, do you look like every other beach body coach out there? And I think too many people get stuck in that. They're like, but how do I stand out? But they don't take any time to focus on the words they share. The, you, so guys, here's a little social media tip. When you make a post, you need to go back and look at it. And you know the little see more button? So when you're reading someone's post and you need to hit see more to read the rest of it, whatever you put before that is very key. If, you, if all the juicy stuff is down below, before someone has to hit see more and you're not getting engagement, that's probably why. This is marketing. This is advertising. We're wearing the CEO hat right now, right? So in the marketing advertising world, think of it from this standpoint. When, it, when a company puts an ad out to you and they want you to click on it on Facebook, they're thinking about what's gonna make this person click on it. Is it the video? Is it what we say? Is it the sale? Is it the button? Is it the pink color? What is it? You have to think like that too. So the photo that you take, and guys, you don't have to go like super extreme with this. Some people are passionate about it. I personally am. But you also just can't throw up anything, right? You just can't like throw up any picture. Um, the lighting matters. Like if you've been doing this two years, you've eventually got to like step it up a little bit. And if you're doing a like page, or if you're doing Instagram, social media is like I said, a whole thing I could spend time on. But the biggest thing that's going to help you stand out is your message. So when I, if I go to your page right now, am I going to be like, ooh, that's a life transformer? Or am I going to go, ew, that's a beach body coach? Because <laughs> people run from beach body coaches, right? I'm not saying not be, don't be proud of Beachbody. Like I wear it loud and proud. I am team Beachbody all over. People know what I do. My friends want to kill me. I don't care. But they see what I do and they even say to me that, you know, like you don't make it gross because you're actually talking about like the life stuff that you experience and how you're overcoming it. And I'm so thankful that I, I was prepared with the personal growth because with all the stuff we went through, guys, like mono last year so from being in the hospital with sean i got mono and it was around for 10 months like my mind went crazy places without having something physically in my mind to hang on to in personal growth i would have crumbled my business would have crumbled kind of did a little bit <laughs> but to last year was hard 
Um, so in 2017, if you're posting about you drank your shake today, like we call those surface level posts. If you're just posting about you're on day three of 21 of your workout, like that's cool, that's awesome. It's gonna be white noise. But if you, talk, if you get really good at being a professional storyteller, you read books on copywriting, you watch other successful people and how they do it. Don't copy them, but you can get ideas. Ask Kathy to critique your social media or whoever your upline is. Just be like, look, I don't feel like I'm reaching enough people. Can you guys imagine if you had a business where people came to you every month in addition to your invites and said, I want to be in your group. That's amazing. <laughs> right? So you can create an attraction marketing business as well as a business where you're finding. So I handpick my people. I see their picture. I, there's a specific kind of girl I'm looking for. I want a girl who's going to join my team that I can travel the world with someday. So I'm looking for someone who likes adventures. So I'm handpicking finding forming, connecting, and inviting to those people. But because social media is such a beautiful gift, if your content is rocking, you're going to have, have a whole other side to your business where people come to you. I'm not promising that to you, but I'll tell you right now. You guys know Candace, my coach, right? Candace Rogers. Let me tell you this. She has 70 messages in her inbox at all times of people like, hey, you didn't message me back. Hey, I want to join your team. Like To the point that I'm like, girl, I don't even know how to help you. She has created such an amazing attraction marketing business that all her connecting and forming from the first two years of her business is now catching up with her. Okay, that's my social media rant for you guys. But um, your marketing matters, your message matters, and how you socially connect with people. Here's the one thing that I can't teach you. I can't teach you how to be socially vibrant and connect with people. That is a skill that you have to form. It's not that you can't do it, and being shy is not a disease. Being introverted is not a disease. There's amazing personal development for that. Candace, my most successful coach I just talked about, she studied what introverts are because she was like, why am I so awkward? Why am I so weird? I didn't think she was, but she just felt like she could not socially connect. So as the CEO, she went and studied introverts. So if you guys need help with that, the introvert advantage is awesome. That's the book I've been recommending and she just like loves it. So um, last little thing, what time is it? Okay, cool. Um, so here's two more things that I want you to focus on as far as um, the how to become a CEO. So remember how I said that one of the five skills is give amazing experiences. So um, what experience opportunity are you offering? And by that, I mean, when you talk to someone and you invite them to your free group, are you a Beachbody coach inviting someone to your free group? Like, I know that Kathy rocks her crockpot groups. I know she rocks her clean eating groups. But I also know that Kathy is personally connecting, relating, having kick-ass conversations, and leaving an impression on this person who is probably judging a Beachbody coach, and then they get Kathy, and then they're like, oh, this person's awesome. You are responsible for creating that awesome experience opportunity for people. So I've been challenging my team to go beyond the five day clean eating groups. And so you, for your brand, everyone's like, what's a brand, right? What are the three things you want to be known for? What are three things, three things you're awesome at? I'll tell you right now, I suck at crack pot and I suck at clean eating. So that's not my thing. But my thing is mindset, living a vibrant life and just kicking ass. So I created my five-day free group, and it's called Beautiful Minds, and I'm giving my five life philosophies because that's my strength. And I'm giving people an amazing experience opportunity to work with me, building trust. So if you're like, well, Colleen, I don't know what my three branding like, top strengths are, you know what my answer is going to be, right? Dig deeper on your personal growth journey, and it will start to come to you. You will start to feel like, when you're reading books and having these, I hate this phrase, but aha moments of like, I'm getting it, the light bulbs are coming on, you will feel so compelled to share that with others. That's where my passion came from. As I started to understand this mindset stuff, I was like, watch out world. I cannot believe what I just learned and everyone has to know this. So I stand on my soapbox and that's what I share because I just, I geek out on it. So what do you geek out on? Okay, maybe it's crafting. You could totally do something for that. Like guys, 
we're friending people from events for, you know, like a food catering event. We're friending people from the Lululemon pages. We have all these different hobbies that make up our passions, you might as well make use of them. Um, like I have a coach on my team who is an amazing uh, cook and she has a, a foodie blog. And so now she's gonna do a free group on like the top 10 comfort foods the healthy way, like mac and cheese, healthy meatballs, the peanut butter shakeology cups. And so like that's her forte. So to become the CEO, go above and beyond. Honestly, if you wanna stand out in 2017, that's what I'm challenging people to do. Cause I don't know in 2018, you're gonna to have to be pretty loud, bold, courageous, I think. So 2017, it's not just April where you're gonna focus on these things. It is all of 2017. It is a long journey to feeling confident, to feeling unstoppable. And then on to, um, January 1st, 2018, you'll have a whole different year when you actually start to focus on this year, serving others and your personal growth. So the couple things I want to say about personal development <clears throat> is, um, you know, I believe personally, and this is just something that I believe in, there's three different types of personal development. So I've been talking about all this personal growth stuff, but, and you're probably like, Colleen, but I read my books. I do my 10 minutes a day. Well, guess what? That's what a Beachbody coach does. <laughs> that's the minimum, guys. Like, that's going to get you to Beachbody coach status. I want to bring you to next level kick assery. Like if you're wondering how people do the big, awesome, unstoppable stuff, it's not 10 minutes of your nose in a book. It's a little bit more than that. So I always tell coaches to focus on that. Want to go CEO? Maybe that's not your goal, but if it is, you need to focus on three different types of PD. You don't have to do them at the same time, but you want to kind of plan out your PD. The first is a me book. Fills your soul, fills your cup, makes you feel good. Kind of the easy reads, things like You Are a Badass, um, things like um, Spirit Junkie, if you guys are into Gabby Bernstein, like the books that personally speak to your soul. And we all need those. Those are important. The second type of, and I'll give some recommendations in a little bit. The second type of personal development is a business book. So you can't just read the feel-good books because those are the easy reads. <laughs> you also have to read the business books. Things like Go For No. There's a brand new Go For No network marketing out. Six Months to Six Figures. That's a workbook. I absolutely love that book. And if you guys are really busy, I really challenge you to schedule out 10 minutes of sit-down read time if you can. Because there's something super special about taking a pen and taking notes in your book and highlighting and rereading the thing that you highlighted. Social media tip, when you write in a book and when you highlight and take notes and star your pages, that's a post. People are like, how do you come up with your content? I'm like, I highlight and that's what I do. So as I'm you know, reading my books and things, whatever, well, I did a pen with this one, but anything that's underlined is basically a post, okay? so. That's just kind of my, my personal business tip for you guys. Um, and then the third type of personal development is not a book. Everyone always messages me after and they're like, so what's this book you were talking about? It's not a book, it's experience. Like Kathy said, these events, that's why you must go to these events. I want you guys to think about the most impactful lesson you've ever had in your life. And it was an experience with people and humans, right? It was something that you felt, something that you experienced because it literally shook your world, whether it was good or bad. You have to get out from behind this computer. You have to stop just sticking your nose in a book. Although it's great, guys. I, sh I shove my nose in a book for at least two hours a day. But that's not all I do. I want you to be more than the beach body coach. I want you to become the CEO. So here's my question to you. Rhetorical question. How long have you been a coach and have you ever volunteered at a Super Saturday? Most people's answer is no. Step up your game. Get involved in a Super Saturday. I don't care if you're the water boy handing out energized shots. I don't care if you check people in. That's how I started. But I needed human connection and interaction. Then from there, I got to speak with Amy Silverman. And then from there, I've got to speak all over because I started somewhere. Think outside the box. And that experience alone is gonna give you an opportunity maybe to, to share your story at the front of the room. And if that makes you wanna throw up, good. That's how you become the CEO. You eventually, literally just have to rip the bandaid off. There eventually has to come a time where you're not letting 
the reasons as to why you're nervous hold you back. You have to be your biggest cheerleader of breaking through those obstacles. So um, I have to give one more example because I, I forgot to do it and it's like my favorite. So how do people do the unthinkable, right? you like, you see like Melanie Mitro, top three coach three years in a row. Maybe you look at Kathy and you're like 10 star diamond earning X amount of dollars a week. To me, that's unthinkable. And I have those things in this business too. Like Liz's business to me is like, she's done the unthinkable. But how do these people do that? They literally become the Olympian of their life. And what do I mean by that? So I grew up a gymnast and um, I hope you all watch gymnastics at the Olympics. Do you guys all watch those routines, right? They're amazing and you're just like, how the hell did she just do that? Well, I'm just letting you know that it actually is impossible. I don't know how they're doing it, but at the same time, when I analyzed it, I said, how do they do that? Here's how they do it. <laughs> they wake up with vibrancy and mastered minds and routines and disciplines, and they practice for four years to get out there on the balance beam or to do the vault or to do the floor routine for one like three second routine they practice for four years. They want to get the gold. So to get the gold in your life and to master and to be that Olympian of your life and business, you need to think tomorrow morning when you roll out of bed and you wanna be a slug, you're gonna instantly snap into what would Michael Phelps do right now? He would probably be jumping in an ice bath, listening to something motivational on headphones and then going for a run and then going for a swim. Like they're highly, highly trained. So that's how people do the unthinkable. So this whole master your mindset, get a set schedule, work on self-discipline is not a bunch of BS just because we say it. That is what real life living Olympian people do. And um, the other thing is, back to the gymnasts, gymnasts never get a 10.0. So for everyone that's a perfectionist, and I hate this BS excuse of, well, I'm a perfectionist, so I can't do this right. Guys, no one ever gets a 10.0 in gymnastics. I, don't, I think in the Olympics, there's been like one maybe. Everyone gets like a 9.2, 9.3. I need you to strive for the five, six, seven, eight, nine. Strive for dedication, not perfection. Because you're not gonna be perfect. You're not gonna get that 10. But every night when you go to bed, rate yourself, because this is what high performers do, on a scale of one to 10. On a scale of one to 10, was I the CEO or a beach body coach of my life today, of my business? If you were a six today, tomorrow, you're gonna be a seven. Once you're a seven consistently, you work for an eight. And then once you're a nine, you teach others how to become a nine. That is how you rock this business, guys. So I hope that was helpful. That's my rant. That was awesome, Colleen. I took so many notes. I love listening to you. And honestly, like this is my whole jam too, is like really treating this thing like a business, thinking and acting like an entrepreneur instead of, you know, with that employee mindset, that really is the big differentiating piece between coaches who have success and coaches who kind of don't. And the thing is guys too, is it doesn't matter how long you've been in this business for. It doesn't matter if you've been doing this for a year, two years, two and a half years, the same amount of time as me, whatever. If you aren't happy with how things are panning out for you in this business, you can change that now. <laughs> you can literally change that right now just by, again, like what Colleen said, putting on that CEO hat, looking at the things that you're doing every day and asking yourself, okay, am I really doing the things that are going to build my business? Am I doing the right things? Am I being intentional with my actions every single day? And you can change that. You can change that one piece. And that's the thing too, guys, is when she's talking about, you know, CEO and she's telling you, you know, 10 minutes of PD challenge you to do, to do more. Anybody who has made it big in this business, like I'm talking, they're living a lifetime of freedom. You've seen them leave their job. They are doing more than the bare minimum that you hear. People tell just beach body coaches, do three to five invites a day, it, you know, add three, you know, people to your network, do 10 minutes of PD. They're taking that and they're like quadrupling that because they are the CEO and they are owning it and they are going places with this. Um, 
So I wrote down some notes here. I wanted to kind of recap a couple of things here. And then I do have some questions here from people that came in that I wrote down if you have time for like two questions. Yeah, I, I have time. I like to respect, because I could talk for hours on this. So I like cut myself off. So <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, no, I love this whole topic. The whole mindset, belief, treating this like a business. And I'm just like you too, Colleen. Like I do not candy coat things. I am like that tough love, you know, like, <laughs> if you want to make this happen then be prepared to put in some work, right? Yeah. Don't be afraid to work for it, guys, and, for, and to fight for it. Because anybody can do it. Like, we are no different than you. Anybody else in this business, they are no different than you at all. Um, but I love how she talked about how you have to be unstoppable, right? How you have to wake up every single day and ask yourself, you know, how can I serve other people? Not letting excuses get in the way. Like, you have to know, guys, as a CEO, that you are going all the way with this thing, no matter who comes with you or not. Like you have to know that. You have to know that no matter what happens, nothing is going to derail me. I am confident with where I'm going with this. I am going all the way. I don't care how long this takes me. I don't care how many no's I have. I don't care who the heck quits and goes elsewhere. And just be prepared to put in the work and be consistent. And you have to be okay with making those temporary sacrifices along the way. No other business, FYI, guys, is going to be easier. There is no such thing as grass is greener. It's a business, and it takes time, and it takes dedication, and it takes belief, and it takes you just fighting for those dreams and leading with your purpose every single day and knowing, like what Colleen said, that you are unstoppable. The awesome thing, guys, which can kind of be awesome, but also cannot be so awesome, is that also as a CEO, and you touched on this too a little bit, is that whatever happens in this business, it's all on you. Whatever does or doesn't happen, you can't point the finger to anybody else. You know, like you can't point the finger to your upline coach. You can't say your upline coach quit. You can't say that you're in, you know, a bad position in, in somebody's organization. You can't say your rock star coach quit. It's your business. So you have to own it and know that wherever you end up, it's, it's all on you. Um, I really liked the five skills, Colleen, too, that you went through. I wrote those down. Those will come in really helpful, guys. So use those with your teams when you're doing the one-on-one -on -one calls. Those are going to be those are going to be key for you. Um, the three different types of reads, that was awesome. And I loved the quote at the end when you said, um, how to do the unthinkable, to become the Olympian of your life. That was awesome. <laughs> that was great. I love that. I just um, thought about it because it's just like, you know, I think of the most like top, the elite people in this world. And what's funny is like, so when I do the Beautiful Minds group, a lot of people are like, oh, they think it's such hocus pocus. And I'm like, look at every single successful person in this whole world. They do personal development. Like you see celebrities at Tony Robbins event, like everyone who wants abundance in their life is willing to listen to what the successful people say. And that was the biggest, like, spoonful of medicine I had to eat in the beginning because I was always like my way or the highway. So back in the beginning, like if I wanted to be where everyone else was that was successful, I had to do those things. So there kind of comes this moment where you're like, okay, I got to believe in it, you know? So it is so true. And like, I'm the same way too. Like I still listen to call after call after call from multiple people in the network. And even if it's on a basic topic, you know, like I'll see a lot of times, even like with our own team calls, people will see a topic and then like no one shows up for it. I was never that person. I was always on listening, whether it was after whatever, because it was just that one little nugget of information, that one little piece of information that would get me to turn on the light switch in my mind even if it was like a basic topic. So just becoming a sponge and really just absorbing it and then not just becoming a collector of information, but then applying it to your business, really, really taking what you've learned and apply it. And a lot of times too, guys, you know, when you're in this business, you think like you're looking for the next answer, you know, like, all right, I got to become a CEO. Like I got to get better at this. I want to be like this one and or that one in the network. And, you know, let me just be a part of this training. And it, you've heard it before guys, the magic and the answer is not in the training. <laughs> the training will definitely enhance your skills, right? But the magic and where it's at is all within you. It's all in you. 
So don't be going elsewhere thinking you're going to find the secret sauce, like in like another training, because that can sometimes take you down the wrong path. Yep. And another thing too, like this is going to be just a little direct, but guys, when you're coming on team calls, like unless you're like half naked and can't show your face, face on a camera, show up to the call because there's no, there's no person on this call that's ever going to be a leader speaking on a call with a black box. And they're like, if you got something going on at home, you can't show, I guess. But at the same time, like you've got to show up. And someday when you're speaking on a call, you'll hate all the black boxes on the screen. <laughs> I just have to say because that's part of being a CEO is showing up. So thanks, Dad, for showing up. Yeah, my dad showed up. I know I had my we had our newsletters go out, so <laughs> he's on my email list. I love it. It's like the coolest <laughs> thing ever. I was like, I hope that's her dad. Yeah, it is. It's totally my daddy -o. Um, so I have a question over here. Yes. All right. What do you tell a coach who has been doing this for a while who hasn't gotten the results they want? How how do they shake it up and regain momentum in their business? I've been there, done that, right, Colleen? Such a good question. And this is something I recently started doing because I was like, how do I get these people who have been doing kind of the same thing for X amount of time and they're not really getting ahead? So I had to come up with, you have to be able to give them something to do, something that you can apply, right? You have to help them sharpen a skill and then you have to help them hold accountable. So this is kind of like a three-step process. So we talk about what's going on, I first check their mind. Like if it's like, if I can feel the BS floating around, I just kind of cut to it of like, look, like I can't do this work for you. Like, can you give me a guess? Do you, do you want to work with me? You want to do it? They say yes. So I kind of throw that out there first. Then I say, there's three ways I need you to show up. Number one is your social media. My team has the most help with social media and I'm willing to literally work with them on social media more than I probably should. Because like I said, it's such a big part of this right now. You can't invite and message people and say, Hey Kathy, how are you today? Your kids are so cute. And then have really crappy posts. You're going to wonder why your conversations don't go anywhere. So I work with them on their social media and I really honest with them about that. I help them with whatever they need. Um, and so, they don't get a call with me and I'm honest with them until they're doing these things. So if I go to their social media and they're back to the same thing, I'm not going to get on a call with them. Um, the second thing is, are you showing up on my calls and in my team page or are you just a fly on the wall asking 7 million questions all the time? I want people to step up and be a giver. I want them to be a part of this community where we're learning together. So if they're ghosting in my team community, which we have a very live team page, um, I need them to show up and hopefully they'll be on the calls. And if they watch the recording, I look for their comment on the what were your biggest takeaways. I need to know what they're getting out of it. And then the third is, are they part of my challenge group or are they running a challenge group? Are you being a challenger first? Because if you aren't in love with the Beachbody products and you aren't so compelled and feeling so awesome, it doesn't matter how many invites you send today. If you're not feeling awesome, and guys, we've all been there. Like when you feel like crap and you gain 10 pounds, you're kind of like, oh, I don't feel like I'm being a very good coach right now, right? But when you're on top of your game, you feel like scientifically, you feel awesome. So I make sure that they're very accountable to being a beach body coach first before I can help them even think about hitting success club and changing someone else's life. So those are the three things that I start with. And then it kind of just, you know, it depends from there. Oh, and then I, I look at their conversations too. I, sh I should definitely say that. Um, you know, I ask them, I don't say, are you friend requesting? I say, how are you finding people? So this is kind of that second skill. So how are you finding people? You'd be amazed. People really don't know like other than looking at the people you may know. So I teach them other ways to do that. Um, and I ask them, what are their connection conversations that they're starting? What are they saying? Like one of my girls was like, I'm sending out so many messages, but her message was like, hey, how are you today? I'm like, that sounds like the filtered inbox messages that you get <laughs> from like the international people that are creeping me out. You know, like that's not going to like change lives. Right. So my messages are like, Hey girl, Hey, I just saw that you went on a trip to Oregon. I love Oregon so much. By the way, where did you get that dress? Cause I love clothes, hair, makeup, travel. So I'm connecting with those people. I hope you have an awesome day. Unicorn sparkle emoticon heart. And then they're like, who is this person that just sent me all these things? You know, they have to feel your energy. But if you're like, Hey, how are you? They're like, who is this? <laughs> Do I know you? That's what they say. Right. <laughs> okay, oh my so God. It's so funny. I am big with the emojis. You know what I mean? Like I, I try to talk behind the scenes 
as if I were talking to you right now, really animated, lots of exclamation points. <laughs> um, all right, so I have two more questions here. And then does anybody else have questions too? You can comment in the chat box. Um, what would you say to somebody on your team if they came to you and they said to you, you know, I just don't think I, that I can do this. It takes a special kind of person to get to where you are. Ooh, that's to be able one. to do what you've done. So I really, I'm kind of like a detective. I would, I'm all about my energy. So if I'm given someone like two years of my energy and I, they're not matching my effort. So that's like my first thing is I make sure that they're like showing up. And if they're doing those things, I will continue to work with them. And I'll say, what do you feel is holding you back? Typically, I know what's holding them back. Or I know that maybe their, their confidence in their conversations isn't coming through. Their physical results aren't there. They're still posting about their cat like 25 times a day. They're sharing stupid things. You know, typically I know. But I ask them, like, what do you feel is the difference between you and me? Or what do you feel like the special person that can do it? Good leaders ask great questions. Everyone should write that down. To answer Kathy's question, good leaders ask great questions. So if you, if you can't remember, like, how to mentor people, it's not your job to figure it out for them. Because hopefully their confidence will remind them to just figure it out. It's your job to guide, love, encourage, and support, but we just ask questions and get to the bottom of what's going on. It's just like a doctor, right? How you feeling? What's going on? All of those things. So, I mean, I guess there, it depends on what their response is, but it all comes down to confidence. If I have a confident person and I'm like, hey, why don't you go make a live video and like share a part of your story or go make a live video about like the last two minutes of your workout. Typically, when, you, when you're bold and courageous in the ebbs and the flows of this business, that's what I have to do when I'm like, shit, I'm at Success Club 8. I got to go be bold, courageous, do a hard workout, um, you know, take a, an eye-striking picture. Like, I think of those things of what's going to make me stand out. I try to build up their mojo to help them gain some momentum because that's all they're lacking. And if they don't have the confidence to believe that they're going to figure it out, I at least try to help them. But... It really depends on, you know, how much I've already worked with the person. Sometimes I just leave the ball in their court. So I check in with them totally. That was a great answer. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, and then what do you, because let's just be realistic here. Anybody who really wants to make it big in this business and wants to earn a residual income and be able to leave their job or do, do part-time for their full-time job, retire their spouse, you know, get rid of credit card debt, you obviously have to build a team, right? Like just hitting Success Club 5 every month is just not going to cut it, right? So how many active coaches do you tell your coaches that they should be recruiting every single month? My, so... I think that there's two ways to do it in this business. There's like the Bonnie Angle, Success Club 91, like it's a numbers game. And then there's like the Stephanie Chico who hits Success Club 6 and recruits, recruits quality, bleh, quality over quantity. So I've seen it done both ways, which is what I love about this business is because you can own it either way. I'm not a Success Club 91-er. I'm always a 10. Um, I've only missed Success Club 10 one time. And um, I, I'm usually like Success Club 12 to 18. And like, that's not crazy. But my goal is always business builders. So 50% of the people that I help are probably challengers and 50% of the people are high quality coaches. To answer your question directly, two to three people is directly what I wanna help. If I, some months I recruit nine, some months I recruit five, but I want two to three people who when I talk to them, they're posting on social media. Literally, my brand new coach as we were speaking just messaged me. So I went live again three days in a row. Like, I would rather get two people like that who are not just going to burn out in six months and be all bummed out and then just, you know, go away. So to me, it's the quality over the quantity, but I also think that you have to set the expectation that they're not all going to stick around. They're not all going to be rock stars. So it also is a numbers game in a way. So I kind of, I have an expectation and understanding of that for myself. Yeah, no, I, I'm the same way with that. I would rather just have like, it is like a numbers game, you know, like usually if I try to bring on, you know, like five active coaches, two of them will be like really awesome, good quality ones that will be posting and they'll be on the team page showing up to the calls. So yeah, definitely quality, quantity, quality over quantity. All right. Yeah. Does anybody have any other questions for Colleen while we have her take advantage of her? She's awesome at this kind of stuff. Trust me guys. 
She's been in the business for a long time. She's been through it all. <laughs> she can help you. Wild red. Yeah, Remember, the deal was one question. Someone has to ask one besides Kathy. I know. Come on, guys. Like, seriously? <laughs> Step it up, people. <laughs> Just make one up. Just make one up, guys. Somebody. Don't make me call you out. <laughs> I'll call somebody out. I feel like I'm in my kindergarten class. Oh, I see Christina right here has a question. Thank you, Christina. Oh, Hi. Thank you so much, Colleen. The call's been amazing. Oh, good. I'm glad. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned, gosh, where was I? I took so many notes, like I'm in note world here. Um, you mentioned that you think of other creative ways to find people besides that you may know. Could you just yeah. mention like a couple of, of creative places on Facebook or, um, or Instagram that what you use? Yes. So, Thank you. yeah, I'll do Facebook first. So okay. we have to be very disciplined with this because we can get like lost on Facebook, like distractions and stuff. But I do it at nighttime when I'm sitting on the couch. So if you guys watch TV, like, I don't know if you're like me, I don't really watch TV. The TV's on and I'm on my phone working. <laughs> my husband's like, you're not even watching the TV, but this is when I do it. So, um, I tell my new coaches that you need to go like 10 to 20 Facebook pages that are like you. So for example, mine would be like the music festivals I go to, uh, camping brands, makeup, you know, whatever your branding is, go to, go like their Facebook like pages, 10 to 20 of them. I mean, you, you can do more, but that's what I tell them to start at. And then you're going to start to notice as you scroll on Facebook, because you all do it, that their ads are going to be shown to you. And what's cool, so let's say I like, um, you know, Makeup Geek Cosmetics. When I like their page, other cosmetic brands that are like that will also start targeting me. So the more makeup brands I like, the more that other makeup brands are going to start targeting me. What's amazing is when their new, you know, eye palette comes out and they run an ad for it, every person that's liking and commenting on that is like me. So I have found the coolest chicks that I can message and have a, a conversation right off the bat with because they're like me from these ads. So you have to scroll a little bit. And I really, like, I feel like the more things that I like and engage on, these ads are popping up. So last night I did a share, shared screen team call and I showed my team. I started scrolling and one of them popped up and I friend requested three people. I, am, I immediately send the message. I don't even wait. I friend request and I send the message and I say like, hey girl, and I make a personal comment and I usually leave it with something nice. Like, I hope you have an awesome day. I absolutely love sharing the positivity and love with smiling babes on social media. I pick people with smiling selfies and then they're like, thank you so much for sending me such a sweet message. So my connections, my friend requests are awesome. So that's my tip for Facebook. I have been using that trick for like two years now. It's still to this day is my go-to. Groups for me, like, I don't know. I, I haven't had too much luck. I, and like I said, there's a million ways to do this business. Maybe groups work for you. Um, but events are another thing. So if there's a music show or a yoga festival or something, if you go to the private group, it shows you all the people that are in the group. And it's like, free for all. And so you just want to be careful as soon as Facebook starts to say, Hey, friend request people, you know, that's kind of my sign for the day. Like, okay, I sent out 17 friend requests. I'm good for today. So just be mindful of that. Um, Instagram, I honestly use the explore page. So do you guys know what I'm talking? It's like the little magnifying glass. So the more things that you start to like and comment on, this is the law of reciprocity. You must like and comment on other photos for Instagram to know what you're into. So the more you do that, when you go to Instagram and you click that little magnifying glass at the bottom, that's called the explore page. It's going to start to show you things like mine's full of makeup, food, music festivals, and yoga and travel right now. So I basically just go to their pages. I like and comment on them. And, you know, if there's someone I want to connect with, here's my message I've been sending them. Like, I don't even have to search hashtags anymore because this explore page is so specific to me as I am liking other photos. Um, so this is what I say. I say, hey, girl, just, and I use a little unicorn because that's my thing. Just creep in your page and just wanted to say hi. Um, you are so smiley and fun on your Instagram. I love when I can connect with other positive souls. I hope you have a rockin' day. And I'm just doing this like 10 to 20 times a day on social media. That's the compound effect at, at its finest. So 
I spend a lot of time kind of digging and just know guys that this has a 30, 60, 90 day effect. So the 30 days when you add and connect with people, maybe in the second month, you invite them to your free group. Then maybe in day 90, they're in your challenge group. So don't expect this to be like a 30 day thing. This isn't working for me. You have to consistently do it. Um, Tammy, I do this from my like page. You can't really, you can't scroll a news feed on a like page. Um, like page or so I think that having a like page is the smartest thing in 2017 anyone could do but here's my but you need to master social media first and you need to do Jesse Reagan's training don't throw a spaghetti against the wall invest the money in Jesse Reagan's training it is for beach body coaches who want to run a like page you can't run a like page without small investments and I'm talking like three bucks a day when you run ads um, his training is mind-blowing. It will teach you how to find your target audience, like everything. So I, I do Instagram like page and personal page, and I just, I'm copy and pasting from my like page to personal page because they are two different people. My personal page is more so for who I find and my team, because they need to see me posting, like pages, it's really hard for them to see what I'm posting. My like page, I'm working on a whole specific target audience. Just, just uh, socialteambuilder.com. It's worth the money and um, it's a write off. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, everything's a write off, guys. Yeah. Basically, our whole life is a write off. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I need new makeup for this new event, write off. It, no. It's so true. Anything that you can tie into the business, write off. <clears throat> Don't even think twice about it. Those are awesome, awesome tips, Colleen. Thank you. And that training, guys, is amazing. I'm in the middle of it right now, actually. It's seriously so good. But Colleen is right, guys. Like, you have to have social media mastered first before you go on to getting into the whole like page training thing and creating one and all that stuff. But and I just, does, you. yeah, I just, he I does just, a really good job of like teaching you how to tell your story. But I feel like some people kind of have that gift and some people just don't really connect with it and they need yeah. some time. But the more you get out there and be vulnerable and like, so phase one of your business getting to success in the beginning, you're going to imitate other people. You're, you're going to have to watch what other people do. Yeah. So, yeah. So true. I have a social media question. Do we have time for one more? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, so I was, you know, thinking about, you know, what you had mentioned about um, looking at our, at our page and, you know, and I'm talking like my personal page because I just started my like page um, and I'm in the Jesse Reagan training, but I haven't, um, I haven't had the time to put into it yet um, because it's like end of the school year and I'm just, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not being dedicated with my time for that yet. So anyway, with that being said, I haven't started that. Not, now knowing that I'm in this, but I haven't started that yet. Um, what suggestion would you have for me for when I want to go back and look and kind of audit my page? Because I'm a mom, I'm a teacher. Um, one of my things I really like is food prep. And, um, and so I post like lots of things with like recipes and meal prep tips and things like that. So awesome. what would you suggest as being like a good balance of personal life with, with also business? And if I were to kind of go through and audit my page, what should I kind of be looking for? Um, so there is, I just did my, my team call on this two weeks ago. Um, and there was, what's her name? Wendy Jo Spencer, like blew my mind with this. Uh, did, are you guys in that, the Diamond Dash or no? I don't even know what teams are part of what. You are? Okay. So um, she did this video on your branding. And she literally gave a calendar of the four posts you should do a day if you're really like wanting to grow the business. and so. Like, I actually got that. You have three branding positions in your life. And so one of them for you is food. I think you said, like, mom and whatever else you want to do. Um, so there's a schedule that you can follow. So if you don't have it, I can give it to you if maybe Kathy has it. But, like, it's gold. And so four times a week, you should have an epic post about your top three branding positions. So basically once a day, if you do the math, you know, that's seven posts. Um, once a day, you should have an epic post about one of your top three branding um, 
positions, she calls them. So if food is going to be one of them, you need to, so here as a CEO, we serve, right? So you love food, cool, but how can you help change people's lives with food? And you have to master that mission. What is your mission statement? Because there's a lot of people who love food in Beachbody, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to figure out what's your specialty of helping people. Probably it's a full-time working mom. How do you get it done? That, that's your gift. Figure out your way to share that with people. But back to the post. So you need to have an epic post four times a week that's like seven to eight paragraphs of sharing your passion, sharing your knowledge. That's getting people to engage and follow with you. So um, I really think the best thing for me to say is that, but Kathy can show you that schedule. Um, I don't actually, I, was, I thought I had it in my downloads, but it's in my computer somewhere. I don't remember it off the top of my head, but it's a live video every day. Um, like if you really wanted to step up your social media and be dedicated, um, you know, it's one live video a day, two or three minutes. You can do four or five minutes and one epic post. And then like, there's other questions from that video. If you guys want the team call, I can just give it to you. So. Okay. That'd be perfect. Thank you. Yeah. That'd be awesome. If you could send me over the, um, the video and then I can just share it in the team page and I will post the, um, schedule to you guys because that diamond group is awesome. So There's good. so much good stuff in there. So yeah, I think that it's, social media is a skill that you'll learn over time, but ask for feedback. Like if, if Kathy's your upline, be like, hey, what do you see? What do I need to change? And just be open. Like the faster that you can get critiquing done, um, the quicker. Like I have other girls from other teams that ask me and I'm just honest with them right away. And they're like, oh, you're so right. Because it's a different point of view. Okay. Thank you so much, Colleen. You're welcome. So true. All right, Colleen, I will not keep you any longer, but this call was amazing, and we always love hearing from you. You have so much great information to share, and you're so inspiring and so motivating, and you know your stuff, um, so we really appreciate you taking the time out of your night to inspire us, and I took so many notes, and I'm sure that the team did too, so thanks so much for being here again, and you know I love you. Love you too. <laughs> thanks for having me. Anytime, and I hope you guys have a great night. Thanks, everyone who hopped on. Bye, everyone. Thank you. You're welcome.